Hello and welcome to another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler and today we're going to be doing Unit 3, Lesson 5 on Proportional Relationships. Now much of the math that we do today is going to be just a natural follow-up to the ratio work and also the algebra work that we've done along with the ratio work. Remember, proportions are simply equations where one fraction is set equal to another. But in this lesson, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the idea that two quantities or two variables could be proportional to one another. So let's get into the first exercise where we explore what it means for two variables to be proportional. All right, here we go. When two variables have a constant ratio, we call the variables proportional. All right, so let's take a look at exercise number one. A snail is moving along the ground at a steady pace such that the distance it has traveled, represented by the variable d, is given in the table below as a function of the minutes it has been moving. Letter A simply asks us to plot the points from that table on the double number line below that represent the snail's distances and times where the first one's been done for you. All right. So you've worked a little bit before with double number lines with ratios, right? Um, and what this is going to illustrate is how these two variables, distance and time, end up being proportional. And let's take a look at why, right? Just double number line, all this means is that two seconds, right, the snail is that it has moved a distance of five inches. It's not moving very fast. Anyway, after four seconds, it's moved a distance of 10. So, you know, if I'm just going to plot this after four seconds, it's moved a distance of 10, right? After six seconds, it's moved a distance of 15. After eight seconds, a distance of 20. And after 10 seconds, a distance of 25. Very, very easy. And of course, very easy. Let's point out the obvious because these two kept being right up above each other, all right? Now, let's kind of explore why that is in letter B. Letter B asks us to form the ratio of, as a fraction, so we want a ratio as a fraction, of the distance to the time for each of the five columns of the table below. Reduce each fraction to its lowest terms. Now, again, keep in mind, right, we want the ratio of the distance, the distance to time. Distance is in the numerator, 2 is the fraction bar, time is in the denominator. So for example, right, the first one is simply going to be 5 inches per 2 seconds. That's the first ratio, right? The second ratio, however, ends up being 10 inches, right, per 4 seconds. But as we know, right, this is not in simplest form. This fraction or ratio is not in simplest form because both the numerator and the denominator are divisible by 2. So if we go ahead and do that, divided by 2, divided by 2, we would find 5 inches to 2 seconds. Likewise, our next ratio, 15 inches to 6 seconds, right, this ratio, again, is just 15 to 6, which we can reduce by dividing both numerator and denominator by 3. And if we divide numerator and denominator by 3, we end up getting 5 inches <laughs> to 2 seconds. And we just keep finding that, right? When we have the 20 to 8, if we divide by 4 and divide by 4, we end up getting 5 to 2. And the final one, 25 to 10, if we divide by 5 and divide by 5, we get 5 to 2. All right. Now, what this really tells me and what it illustrates is that in this particular example, distance and time are proportional to one another because their ratio keeps being that constant 5 inches per 2 seconds. So they're, they're proportional to each other. Now you can certainly have situations where an object is moving at different speeds because it's what's known as accelerating or decelerating. And you might have studied that a little bit in seventh grade physics. But in this case, right, the ratio of distance to time keeps being this constant. Now in letter C, 
it asks, what is the unit rate associated with the ratio, and I can now say it as just one ratio in letter B. Include proper per units. Illustrate this unit rate on the double, double number line. All right, so what I'd like you to do is change this ratio, five inches per two seconds, into a unit rate. See if you can remember how to do that. All right, well the way we, way we can always change any ratio into a unit rate is simply by dividing the numerator by the denominator. I think I'm gonna do that actually uh, using law and division. In other words, I, I actually wanna do five divided by two which I can easily do uh, using long division if I choose or a variety of other methods. You know, it gives us an entirely predictable answer, um, which is 2.5. And specifically, 2.5 inches per second. 2.5 inches per second. Now, notice it also asks us to illustrate this unit rate on the double number line. Well, we can actually do that quite easily because when we come up to the double number line, if we come over to one second, right, and remember our answer was 2.5 inches per second, then what we can see is if we go vertically from that, we end up being here at 2.5. Right? So after one second, we've traveled, or the snail, <laughs> unless we're on the snail's back, the snail has traveled 2.5 inches. All right, these two variables are in proportion, or are proportional. Every time we do the ratio of one to the other, it's constant. Proportional relationships are extremely important in mathematics. So let's talk about them a little bit more. Proportional relationships, two variables, M and N have a proportional relationship, or are called proportional, if their ratio, or quotient, is always the same. In equation form, M divided by N is equal to a constant. The constant is, is the unit rate. It's also known as the constant of proportionality. All right, so real simple follow-up question to what we've been just doing, exercise number two. For exercise number one, what was the constant of proportionality? What is this constant better known as? Well, we literally worked it out in the last piece of the problem. In other words, the constant of proportionality was 2.5 inches. Was it per second or per minute? Ah, uh, looks like seconds per second. I didn't know if it was a slow snail or a really slow snail. 2.5 inches per second. And because this is a distance per time, this is just better known as the speed. All right. So when we have two variables that are proportional to one another, then when we divide the two values of the variable, we always get the same number. That number is called the constant of proportionality, and very often it has some kind of common sense meaning. When we have distance divided by time, like we did in the last problem, the common sense meaning of that is the speed, or how fast the object is moving. Ah, 2.5 inches per second. Some physicists will call this the velocity of the object, all right? And we'll see speed a lot in this course because it's a great example of the ratio of distance to time. Anyhow, let's take a look at another exercise. All right, exercise number three. Janelle bought cupcakes three different times at a bakery. The number of cupcakes she bought, N, and the total cost, C, is given in the table below. Letter A asks us to use long division, find the ratio of the cost to the number of cupcakes for each of the three columns using long division. Show your work. All right, so I'd like you to do this on your own, but use long division to find the ratio of the cost to the number of cupcakes in each one of those examples, okay? So you should have three long division problems, see what you get for each. Pause the video now and take a few minutes to go through this. All right, let's do some decimal long division. No problem here, this is gonna be pretty easy, right? In the first case, what I'm gonna be doing is doing $6.75 divided by three cupcakes, and let's see, we'll get a two there, 
six, subtract zero, seven, the decimal. I'm gonna get three, six, one, five, and five. So in the first case, I'm gonna get 235. The next case, I'm gonna do 1125 divided by five. Five goes into 11 two times. Get 10, subtract one, two. Five goes into 12 two times. That gives me 10, subtract 25 and five. That makes me wonder about that. Ah, that's why. That should be a two there. All right, and in the final case, we've got 18.00 divided by eight. Eight goes into 18 two times. That gives me 16, subtract 20. Eight goes into 20 two times, 16. Subtract 40, and eight goes into 45 times. All right, and we get that. So there's our our answer in each case, the ratio of the cost to the number of cupcakes. All right, so now let's take a look at letter B. Does your work from A suggest that there is a proportional relationship between the total cost and the number of cupcakes? So that should be yes or no. If so, what is the constant of proportionality and what does it represent? All right, we'll pause the video now and see if you can answer this question. And the answer is yes, okay? So the first question is, does it suggest a proportional relationship? And the answer is yes, because it is the same ratio each time, all right? If so, what is the constant of proportionality? Well, the constant of proportionality is that number. 225 per cupcake. And what does it represent? Well, just by writing it down, we kind of know what it represents. Each cupcake, actually, now just go best, it represents it represents the cost of one cupcake. All right, let me bring this up, and that's it, right? Now, you might say, well, of course, you know, you get 225 for a cupcake, right? So then you, the more you sell, the, the more money you bring in, and, and that's what you have. But have you ever been to a bake sale? You know, where maybe they'll, they'll sell like, you know, um, a brownie for, um, you know, $2.50, but then you can buy like two brownies for $4 and like five brownies for $5 or something like that. You know, so in those cases, right, the, the unit cost could go down as you buy more. In this case, what's happening, right, is that the total cost and is proportional to the number of cupcakes because that unit price, $2.25, $2 $225, very expensive cupcake, $2.25 per cupcake was held constant in all three cases. All right, let's wrap it up. So today, what we learned about was a special type of relationship between two variables. The idea that two variables could be proportional to one another, meaning that their ratio, or when one is divided by the other, that division always turns out to be the same number. That number is what we call the constant of proportionality and very often times has meaning in the real world. Maybe it's the speed of the object. Maybe it's the per cost price of something that we're buying, right? But we should always be able to tell what it represents by looking at the units. All right, I'd like to thank you for joining me for another NGen Math 7 lesson by eMath Instruction. My name is Kirk Weiler, and until next time, keep thinking and keep solving problems. Thank you.